Rise and shine and welcome to the Move Forward Network where we focus on the parent-childhood relationships so that you parents out there can hit it out the park with your kids and everyone can be successful and everyone can work together to reach the full potential. My name is Zach. I'm a licensed social worker and school social worker who works with children and parents so that way they both can reach their full potential and understand each other. In today's topic, we're going to be diving deeper into denial, which is one of the five stages of grief. And if you need a reminder, Look in the show card up there for the five stages of grief as an overview for everything. In this, in this new series, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper down into each one so that way we can understand them a little bit better and know how we can overcome them and what to expect. So I want you to picture this. You're on the baseball field. It's game night. You got everyone in the stands. You're going up to the batter spot. You're walking can't believe this has happened to you, that you're here, right now, right here, it's game day. When you look up, you just have that disbelief. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here, I can't believe I'm doing this, I can't believe this is my job, I can't believe this is happening to me. That kind of, I can't believe this is happening to me, is similar to when someone goes through a tragic event, whether they lost somebody, whether they lost a job, a friend, whomever. And the person has that dip, disbelief that they just will reject that reality that this can't, they can't believe this is happening. That's similar to when someone goes through a traumatic event. And that disbelief, like, I can't believe this, I, I can't accept it, this, there's no way this is true. So you're walking up to that batter spot, you're going, you're moving and fear and doubt and uncertainty kind of creep into your mind. And you think, how am I going to do this? There's so much pressure on me to perform, to do well, to act like everything's okay when everything's not okay. That's what's like when someone's going through that denial stage. It's what it's like. And it's hard. It's hard when that person where everyone expects you to get well like that. Everyone expects you to go back to normal like nothing ever happened. And that's something that's very difficult when someone's going through that. So one of the three baseball tips that you want to do when you're going up to that batter spot is you want to gather, you want to make sure you have your team together. You want to make sure you know what team you're playing for. Are you the home team or opposing team? It's very important because who you, who's going to be on your side is who's going to support you. The home team's going to want to support you and do the best that you can to do with the skills, especially if you're a rookie and just doing this for the very first time. The opposing team, what do they do when they go up to the batter, the batter spot? Boo! Hey, better, better swing. Hey, better, better swing. They're trying to distract you. They're trying to get you not to focus on the heart of the issue and what's really going on. So you want to make sure that you're on your home team and that you have the team of people who are going to support you, love you, and care about you and who will take time to listen to you. You want to make sure you're surrounded by those team, the good team. Not the opposing team who's just going, boo, hey, 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 get better, get better. Hey, boo, hey, better, better swing, better, better swing. Those are the people who want to get you better immediately. So we need to pay attention to that. So that's the first step is get your team together. Go in the dugout, make sure you everyone has a role and responsibility. The catcher is in the catcher's position. First base knows to go to first base. Second base knows to go to second base position. Short, short stop, and the rest. So you want to make sure that when you're going through that down denial and you don't know what's happening, you want to make sure that everyone has a role of how they're going to support that person. So it's a whole family, you know, who might be doing some of the cooking, the cleaning, who's going to be checking up on you as a family, you know, if you need to reach out to friends and, you know, maybe they can bring you dinner, you know, that's that's your support team. That's your home team. Those are the team who are going to be patient and try to understand what you're going through to try to understand how your world just shattered and how your heart's just broken. And you don't know what's going through, what's going on because there's a lot of chaos that can go in someone's mind. A lot of circling and thoughts and fear and anxiety that can go into somebody. And so when someone's going through so much pain and so much 
grievances, you really want to make sure that you are using coping skills. Now, coping skills are what you use to manage anxiety, stress, depressive thoughts, and so on. So adaptive coping strategies are the good strategies. The maladaptive coping strategies are the harmful strategies that are going to make the condition worse. So adaptive coping strategies would be like journaling, writing, um, talking to a friend, talking to a family member, being honest about your grief and what you're going through, painting, drawing, these are creative outlets. The maladaptive is when you're smoking, drinking, you know, you see that increase a lot. And those substances are actually going to be harmful to you. They're not going to benefit you. Then there are more distractions, especially not getting good sleep and eating poorly. That's just going to further make your mind a mess because if your mind's a mess and you're eating a mess, then it's going to be really difficult to you for you to focus on the real issue. So just be, just be aware, be mindful of what you're going through and be honest about what you are going through with people. That's going to be the biggest thing you can do. So we have the first step is getting that team together. Second step is getting all those coping strategies put together. Because when you're going for a game, you want to make sure that you're trained and you're ready and you're conditioned and you're prepared and you practice and you review. So you might want to make a game plan. From that, having those coping strategies, having a game plan of, okay, when someone's going through this kind of pain, this is what we're going to do to help them out. We're going to be there. We're going to support them. We're going to listen to them. And if they and they're going to let us know what they need from us. So that way, we're all working here together. And that's what we want. We want to work together. We are a team. We're the home team. So the third, third tip is when you're walking up to the batter spot. You want to make sure you know if you're a righty or a lefty. Are you going to swing with your right hand or your left hand? Because if you don't know which area you're going to swing at, it's going to be very difficult for you to tackle on the next step. So we really want to focus on this step of what we're going to do. But if you have that clear mind, like, I know I'm a righty. I know I'm going to swing right. Go to the right spot. And then when you go there, and then you'll be watching the pitcher. You know, is he going to throw a curve, a fastball, a slow ball? Is he going to try to fake me out and throw it at first base? So we want to make sure that we're in that clear mind of what we're doing. Because the next step is anger. And with anger and that frustration, it's going to be the next topic of discussion for the next video. So right here, so just... Going with denial is that when we're ready and we're ready to overcome it, we're ready to accept the reality of it. We're ready to take that ball right on. And we're going to pay attention to is it a curveball, a fastball, a slow ball? Are they going to try to fake me out? We're going to pay attention to all of that. Because we accept the reality that things are not the same. We accept the reality that we're going to, have to do things just a little bit differently. And that's a very difficult and big step for you to take when you're going through the, the denial stage. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button, comment something you learned today, you know, write something you learned today, practice it, whether that's some coping strategies, and start living that you can overcome the denial stage. Once you start believing that, because you can overcome it as a family, as extended family, you can overcome it. You know, subscribe for more mental health videos and I'll see you next video and I hope you have a blessed day and bye.